Mr. Wong at home. Yes, he is. Could I see him? Your name, please? No name. Name, please. Tell Mr. Wong someone wants to see him. Someone who needs his help. Could I come in? No, no. You wait here. A lady to see you. A lady? Very important, he said. Oh. Say I'll be right in. Mr. Wong comes soon. Be sitting here? Yes. You call Inspector Street. Mr. Wong wish to speak to Inspector Street. Just a minute. On your phone, Captain. Wong speaking. There's been a murder in my house, Street. What? I'll be right out. Get a squad car, Jerry. I'll be at Wong's. All right. This is the payoff. Murder in the house of Mr. Wong. Now we've seen everything. Who is she? I haven't the least idea. But the crest on her ring belongs to the Sen Wang T family. She's evidently a person of high degree. Where were you when this happened? I was in the laboratory when she arrived. She told Willie that she had to see me. But then when I came in, she was dead. She just had time to scribble this. Captain J. Captain J, huh? Hey, what's that? I suspect that's a poison dart that was fired right from that window. Oh, a blowgun. Decoits. You know, South American jungle. No, that dart's too heavy for that. That was fired from a Chinese sleeve gun. I have one in my room. I'll show it to you. How does it work? You press the spring back so. It's clasped round the forearm and released with the slightest pressure. Simple, isn't it? 
Yeah, simple and deadly. Who's that? I have no idea. Give me Brodgan, quick. How did you get in here? Look here, Bill Street, what are you trying to pull? How did you get in here? Through the window. How did you know I was here? I followed you here. Take it easy. Oh, look here, Bill, this is one of the biggest stories that's cracked in a long time. I've simply got to get it to my paper. How do you know it's a big story? Well, Princess Lin Wong murdered in the house of Mr. Wong. You boy! Sorry, Wong, this is more or less of a personal row. This is Miss Roberta Logan of the Morning Herald, and probably San Francisco's greatest nuisance. Oh, that isn't what you called me last night when we were having dinner. That has nothing to do with the newspaper or the police department. Don't you ever try to date me up again, Mr. I won't. Good. I believe I heard you identify this girl as the Princess Lin Wah. Yeah, what do you know about her? Oh, I'd be a bright little girl, wouldn't I, to help out your half-witted department after being treated in this fashion. Look, Bobby, I'll see that you get a break on this. Won't you please help us, Miss Logan? For a gentleman, yes. She arrived from China on the Maid of Orient two or three weeks ago. My files, Willie. I tried to interview her on the boat. I think I remember. It was on the 22nd. Oh, now it's you. There we are. Captain Jame. Captain Jame. Captain J. That's the last thing she wrote before she died. Say, the sooner we see this bird, the better. Yes, I'd very much like to interview this Captain Jame. Oh, Miss Logan, by any chance did you know where the princess lived? Yes, she had an apartment in Chinatown, 1432 Grand Avenue. Thank you. That's our next stop. Come on, Wong. Oh, but you're not going. Well, Get you. What are you going to do? Will you let me go? Will you well, stop this, you big bad? You're not going to leave me chained up like I this. I certainly am, baby, till we can search that apartment. I don't want flashlight bulbs all over the place. Get the coroner and the photographers up here and don't let her near a phone till you hear from me. Come on, Mom. Oh, Bill Street, you're the most loathsome human being I've ever encountered. You big bad bull. Yeah! What do you want to see? To the police. Captain Jame aboard? Yes, sir. Captain Street of the San Francisco Police. This is Mr. James Lee Wong. How do you do, gentlemen? What can I do for you? You had a passenger on your last trip, a Princess Lin Wah. Yes, that's right. Why was she traveling on this kind of a boat? Well, we have a few passenger accommodations. We booked passage for her at the request of her brother. Where is he? Uh, he's in northern China. Field Marshal Chang Tsai. Sen Wang T family? That's the family, sir, yes. What was she doing in this country? Sightseeing, I imagine. This is her first trip to America, I understand. And her last. She was murdered an hour ago. The princess murdered? Well, this will be a great shock to her brother. Have you any idea who might have done this? Could one of your passengers have had a motive? Not that I know of. What type of passenger were you carrying? Well, we had a few returning missionaries, a commercial traveler or two, or one or two tourists, but she didn't mingle very much with them. Have you left the boat in the past few hours? No, I haven't, sir. Have you a crew and passenger list you could let me have? I certainly have. Sorry to have bothered you, Captain, and thank you. Not at all. He never batted an eye, did he? We'll check up on him at headquarters. Well, who are they? Police. What? Isn't one of them Chinese? Yes, yeah, a Chinese detective. What do they want? 
Well, you ought to know what they want. What do you mean? Of course, you don't know the princess was murdered. Murdered? Yeah. What did you kill her for, Jackson? Are you crazy? Well, I haven't seen the princess since, well, yesterday afternoon. Did you get a check? Yes. How much? $250,000. And my share? Now, look at here, Jackson. I'm in this thing as deep as you are. She chartered the ship for the airplanes. I put her in touch with you, told her you'd flown as an aviator with her brother in China. I planned this whole deal. All right, I know it. You'll get your share. Where is the money? In the bank. I'll see you there at 10 o'clock in the morning. All right. Pretty clever, Jackson, killing the princess. Yeah, no witnesses to say where the planes were delivered or not or where the money went. You're a pretty clever guy, Jamie. Good night. the place. This one is open street. Anybody in there? Let's see if you can find anything with the princess's name on it. Well, somebody's here or has been here. Perhaps this should have been our first stop. Yeah. Check that closet, Jerry. Long! Poor kid's out cold. Catch who? 
Well, the man that slugged me. Say, if somebody slugged you, I'd give him a medal. A suitcase fell on your head. Oh. How'd you get loose? The nice man that you left to guard me went to get me a drink of water. Wasn't that sweet of him? Arm of the chair came off easy. How did you get in here? Took the key out of the princess's purse. I'm afraid, Street, we must accept the inevitable. Yeah. What were you doing in the closet? Well, there was a man in here. A man? Well, sure, he was searching the desk. What did he look like? He was masked. That's our murder. Can't you give us any kind of a description? Well, he was fairly tall, looked athletic, and he wore dark glasses. Wonderful. That's a help. Did you see where he went? How could I when I was knocked out? Uh, street. All right, put on that gun. This is the police. The police? What do you want? Don't be alarmed. We just want to ask you a few questions. Who are you? Oh, come on. What's your name? I know her. Oh. All right, who is she? She was on the boat with the princess. As her maid? I am her companion. Oh, so you were in her confidence? Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Now, don't be afraid. Why did she come to this country? I don't know anything. Nobody knows anything. Well, at least you can remember what time she left here. Oh, about eight o'clock tonight. And where was she going? What has happened to her? Oh, you expect something to happen to her, huh? You knew something was going to happen. No. Tell me, please. She's dead. Murdered. Now, all we are doing is just to try to help you. Who came to see her here? Who were her friends? She had no visitors. She made appointments. They were always downtown. You mean nobody came here to see her? No one, except... Wait a minute. Who are you looking for? He can hear, but he cannot talk. He is dumb. Oh, you know him? Yes. Has he been up here to see the princess? Yes. Come on. Where does he live? In the basement. Would you please ask him where he just came from? I can't speak his dialect. He is from northern China. Her problem. Can you, can you tell him that the princess is dead? I'll try. Then why? Uh, uh. Well, we understood that all right. Uh. Look. Did you see anybody come in? and go over there? What am I doing? Come here. Did you... Did you do that? was waiting in the alley. A large car. A large black car. Hey. 
Hey, what is this? Wait a minute, Street. He means it was a man about your size. He was masked. And he wore glasses. What did I tell you? Mask, glasses? Now will you believe me? Well, this isn't getting us anywhere. Jerry, you stay here till I get back. And don't let either one of them leave. No, no. Don't leave me. I'm afraid. Now, there's nothing to be afraid of. I'll have a man on guard outside your door the whole time. I'm going out the station and check on that car and also the little fella's story. Maybe he's telling the truth and maybe he's not. Yeah. I'll see you later, Street. There's somebody in Chinatown I'd like to talk to first. Oh, Bill, do you mind dropping me at the paper? No, how do you feel? Oh, fine. Of course, I'm a little dizzy. You telling me. Is here on personal business or in his official capacity? I am here on behalf of the police. Perhaps know the Princess Lin Hua. She was murdered an hour ago. It is perhaps wise that we should open our hearts to you. The princess was in this country to make purchases for her brother. Of war material? Aeroplanes. I see. Her death means that a great project has failed. The resources of this town are at your command. Everything's as quiet as a mouse. Good. Nobody got in past you? Yeah, I was right outside the door. Well, did anybody leave? Who? Oh. The little guy.
Not a sign of him. Send for Street at once. Hello. Yes, Jerry. What? The maid. I'll be right out. Death was instantaneous. Same as the princess. And by the same hand. That must be a powerful poison. We weren't able to identify it in the other case. But after I've made this autopsy, we may know. Good night, gentlemen. Oh, you think it came from here, huh? That's where he said the car was. Hey, the little guy's footprints. Well, get this. Certainly it came from here. Nobody but the little fella or a monkey could go down that drain pipe. He's our man. He may have been making it possible for somebody else. Oh, uh, why get involved? Let's check his room in the basement. Jerry. Have Forbes get a cast of that print. Yes, sir. Cinches it. That pins it on the little guy definitely. What are we waiting for? Just a minute, Street. He may be the killer, but I found out tonight that the princess was here buying airplanes that would have to be smuggled out of the country. Yeah? Oh, and the maid of the Orient. More than likely. I think we'd better talk to Captain James again. Sure, sure. I'll talk to him the first thing in the morning. But you'll have to admit that the little fella couldn't smuggle airplanes. But he could climb up on a wind and use a sleeve gun. And he's just the kind of a guy they'd hire to do their killing. They're not fooling me. Furthermore, I think that dumb act is a gag. Mr. James Lee Wong, see Mr. Davidson, please. Mr. James Lee Wong to see you. Yes, sir. Won't you come in, please? Thank you. How do you do, Mr. Wong? Now, what can I do for you? I'm investigating the murder of the Princess Lin Hua. Oh, yes, I read about it. I was hoping you could be of some assistance to me. I'd be perfectly willing to do anything I can. Uh, won't you sit down? Uh, thank you so much. I understand that she was a depositor in your bank. Uh, quite a large depositor. A large depositor? Yes. And uh, when the princess arrived from the Orient, she carried with her drafts on the Exchange Bank of Hancock for almost a million dollars. She has cashed those drafts. Really? The first sum I recall she withdrew was a day or so after she arrived. It was for $250,000, a cashier's check. That check, of course, can be traced. Yes. It was drawn in the favor of a Captain Jackson, who identified himself as a San Francisco representative of the Phelps Aviation Company of Los Angeles. Now, you bring me the file of the Princess Lenoir, please. Now, this Captain Jackson, did he cash the check himself? No, as a matter of fact, after he identified himself, he opened an account and deposited the check to his own credit. Thank you. Uh, this is the Jackson check. Oh, yes. Thank you. Oh, evidently his office is in the Bronson building on Broad Street. I understand it is. Uh, perhaps he could be of some assistance to you. No doubt. 
I take it from this that she still has a considerable sum of money on deposit with you. Well, uh, her cancelled checks uh, that she signed in English and Chinese show that she drew out large amounts uh, almost daily till she had uh, about $38,000 left. That balance she drew out yesterday in cash and left here with the money. An extraordinary proceeding. Do you know if she had any dealings with anybody else besides Captain Jackson? Well, nothing she ever said would indicate that she had any negotiations of any kind. Of course, I guess that the princess wasn't engaged in sightseeing. That's obvious. Have you the original draft that she presented? Yes, I think I have. Yes, here it is. Oh, yes. Also signed in English and in Chinese. Yes. Hmm. Well, thank you. Oh, by the way, uh, her file would be available to the police department in the event that they should want to... Uh... Oh, in a criminal case like this, the police have access to the records of the bank at all times. Thank you so much. Not at all. I may call on you later. At any time, Mr. Wong. Good day. Good day, sir. Drive me to the Bronson building on Broad Street. Follow that cab. you were trailing me, but I'm certainly very grateful. Well, the K Cab Company isn't allowed to operate anymore. They were put out of business three months ago. I cover the story. Oh, that driver. He ducked down this way. Say, so you won't go away till I come back. No, indeed. Hello, city desk. An attempt was made on the life of James Lee Wong, well-known Chinese detective, shortly before noon today, when he was rescued from a light sedan, camouflaged as a taxi, just before a bomb exploded in its interior. The uh, rescue was effected by Miss Roberta Logan, reporter on the staff of the Herald. Yeah, that's right. No, I'm not kidding. What's the matter here? Oh, hello, Wong. What happened? Evidently, somebody arranged a little surprise for me. <laughs> Certainly looks like it. That's the real thing. And if it hadn't been for Miss Logan here, I'd have been... You certainly would have. The driver ran down the alley. He's blocks away now. Get on it, Steve. Come on, folks. That's all. Oh, I'd be glad to take you where you're going if you'd care to ride with me. I'd certainly feel much safer. Send him in just a moment. I'll buzz you.
How do you do, Mr. Wong? Very nice of you to see me, Captain Jackson. What you sit down? Cigarette? Thanks, I will. I've been <laughs> anticipating this interview ever since I read the newspaper reports that the princess was murdered in your apartment. You realized, of course, that we would trace the check. Well, we were engaged in some rather delicate negotiations. The sale of some airplanes, I believe. She would naturally come to me. Her, her brother, Chang Tsai, head of an army of one of the five provinces, was one of the best friends I ever had. I flew a plane these last campaign. Really? Yes. I met the princess at the boat. Mr. Wong, I had just as well make a clean breast of the whole thing. We were to secretly ship some airplanes to China. On the Maid of Orient? And when did you see the princess last? Well, I talked to her two days ago. We had an appointment to meet the night she was murdered. We were to meet in the uh, lobby of the Palace Hotel where she was to turn over my second payment. But she didn't keep the appointment. And she gave no excuse or explanation? I never heard from her. My first intimation was the shock I received when I read the morning papers. Yes. It had occurred to me, you know, that the cause of her death could be found in the fact that she was secretly buying airplanes. Well, I thought of that too, Mr. Wong. You see, the cause of Chang Tsai has many enemies. His safety is threatened not only by other powers, but by many other army leaders. And of course, San Francisco is filled with their agents. Naturally. As you can imagine, this situation is distinctly embarrassing to me. I had made commitments for a great deal of airplane equipment. And to put it bluntly, I am left holding the bag. Well, I'm obliged to you, Captain Jackson. Goodbye, Mr. Wong. I'll be delighted to help you in any way that I can. Thank you. Goodbye. Good day. Desk. What's this report? Well, get this, Jerry. An attempt on Wong's life. Taxi. Bomb exploded. Hauled out a cab by Roberta Logan of the Herald. Anything can happen with that Logan around. Where's Wong now? He took the girl and drove away in a cab. Well, if he's with her, you better drag the bay. Well, I suppose you came in for your Carnegie Medal. I already have a drawer full of them, Inspector. Uh, where'd you pick up that cab, Wong? I got it just in front of the specie bank of Hankow, where the princess has a large sum of money on deposit. But she's drawn it all out recently. Say. Hey, wait a minute. There's a phone in the drugstore. Will you give me an echo? Oh, gladly. Thank you. <laughs> Well, now that we've gotten rid of her, what's the real lowdown? Well, let's hear your news first, Street. Well, not much. I've picked up half the suspicious characters in Chinatown. Oh, the little fellow, I, I haven't got him yet, but I'll have my hands on him any minute. Splendid, Street. Now, in the meantime, I'd like you to get me a report on the Phelps Aviation Company from the Los Angeles Department. Oh, that's a cinch. I'll have it out to your house tonight. Thank you, Street. See you then. Yeah. Hello, Bailey. Get me the Los Angeles Police Department. Yeah. Hold it. Wait a minute. I'll call you back. What's the idea of busting in here? Will you lend me another nickel? I just gave you one. What'd you do with it? Apple Annie. Apple Annie. Here. All right, all right, all right. What did you want with the Los Angeles Police Department? You'll never know. Oh, now look here, Bill. Why don't you play fair with me? You'd be in a pretty pickle right now if it weren't for me. Wong murdered. What would the chief and the commissioner say? They'd want to know why you didn't have him tailed, protected. That's what I was doing. I thought of that. Where did you get that idea? Well, it was just a hunch. Look here, Logan. Are you holding out on me? Do you know something that I don't know? 
That wouldn't have to be much. Boy, you little shrimp. Scram. All right, get me Bailey again. searched the whole town. The little fellow's disappeared. Still no trace of him. I've checked every hotel in Chinatown, every rooming house. I've watched the waterfronts, the trains, the boats. He's vanished. Well, in view of his lack of size and the fact that he's dumb, I don't understand why you can't find him. Oh, you don't? Well, I've had the smartest men in the department looking for him, and they can't trace him. Don't you think I know that he's an answer to a lot of questions? How about the report of that aviation company that I asked for? Oh, that's a fake. They got an old hangar in Glendale they use for a mailing address. Sewers, drain pipes, manholes. Can you imagine me tracing the little fellow through a sewer? A fake. And yet Captain Jackson was supposed to meet the princess in the lobby of the Palliser Hotel the night she was murdered to receive a large sum of money from her. Palliser Hotel? Yeah, that's where James stands. Captain James, the... James, Jackson, Captain J... Why haven't you had the hotel watched? What do you think I've been doing? I got a man on every floor, a sergeant behind the desk, and two of the bellboys are working for me. What do you want me to do, move in too? My dear Street, I give you my solemn word, I am not deaf. As long as you're getting technical, Mr. Wong, the girl was killed in your house, not mine. You had a sleeve gun in there that could have done it. Technically, I should arrest you. I think you're right. Oh, cut it out, Wong. I'm only kidding. I'm all in. I've been up for two days and two nights and no sleep. The commissioner's on my neck and that girl's in my hair. I'm just getting punchy. Punchy. Yeah, that's it. That's the only place I haven't looked for the little fella, in a punch board hole. Willie, a cup of tea for the inspector. Quickly. Tea! That's all I need. Good night. <laughs> Mr. Davids. What is his name, please? James Lee Wong. James Lee Wong to see Mr. Davidson. All right. Okay. All right, get back. Get back. Come here. Come here. Come in, sir. Right in here, Mr. Wong. How do you do, Mr. Wong? How do you do, Mr. Davidson? I hope my dogs didn't annoy you, Mr. Wong. They've been rather getting out of hand of late. Well, they gave me a rather hearty reception, to say the least. <laughs> well, I'm sorry I have to keep such vicious watchdogs, but our bank being of international character and the trouble in the Far East and the large Oriental population here, one has to be rather careful. I quite understand. Uh, you have a drink? Thank you. Uh, scotch or bourbon? Scotch, please. But no ice. I see. You know, I rather hope I'd see you soon again, Mr. Wong. I'm rather interested in this case. Uh, by the way, the uh, canceled checks were returned to me this morning. Yes. Thank you. And they were most interesting. In fact, they're my only excuse for this intrusion on your privacy. It occurred to me that it might have been an imposter who withdrew the money. 
and not the princess at all. Of course, anything is possible, Mr. Wong. But I wouldn't like to think that I've been fooled. Well, I hope you're right. Now, what did you find out from Captain Jackson? He was negotiating with the princess for the sale of some airplane. Mm, I suspected that much. You know, her brother's army is notoriously shy in air power. By the way, uh, where are the airplanes? What's happened to them? That I don't know. But he cashed rather a large check, which was no doubt a first payment. What's to be done about that? Well, at the moment, we are only interested in discovering the murder of the Princess Lenoir and her maid. Is uh, Captain Jackson one of your suspects? I can say this much. Inspector Street has some extremely strong views on that point. Really? Oh, pardon me just a moment. Hello? Oh, yes, Mr. Harley. Yes, I want quite a nice headstone. Oh, I see. Well, suppose you get some nice designs together within the next few days, and you and I will go over them together. Yes. Well, thank you very much. Uh, goodbye. I just have to bury one of my dogs in the local pet cemetery. Oh. He was also a great day. Yes, but he got a bit too vicious. Bit the gardener, and I had to dispose of him. <laughs> well, I mustn't detain you any longer. Oh, must you really go? I'm afraid so, yes. Oh, well, be sure and let me know of any new developments. Indeed, I will. Another drink? Thank you, no. I'm afraid I've taken up too much of your time as it is. Oh, not at all. Uh, don't fail to call on me if I can be of any help at all. Thank you, I will. Goodbye. Goodbye. Talk fast. Where's the rest of the princess's money? She drew it out. Quick stalling. Well, there's a large check drawn to uh, Jackson's account. I know sure there is. But where's the rest of it? Wong, the detective, examined all the canceled checks. Why don't you ask him about it? It's a good suggestion. Where's your telephone? Well, there's one in this room here. I get on that phone. Call up Wong. The number is Major 4782. Well, what'll I tell him? Tell him you want to be here right away. Tell him to send a car for him. Hello, Mr. Wong? Uh, this is Davidson talking. Could you possibly come and see me this evening? Why, of course, Mr. Davidson. I should be delighted to come. It's very kind of you. How soon will the car be here? Thank you so much. Mr. Davison, Mr. Davison, something terrible has happened. The dog. Stay where you are. Who's this man? My butler. Watch Davidson.
Well, that settles him. I took care of the dogs and locked their keeper in the garage. Good. Now go down and pick up Wong. We made Davidson phone him. He's expecting you. Okay, good. Hello, Bill. What's new? I need the story for the Bulldog Edition. I've got nothing. Don't tell me that. Did you hear from Wong? No, I've been trying to get him myself all day. Hello. Oh, the commissioner? Okay, Brady. All right, Scram. Get out of here. The commissioner's on his way in. Well, let me stay. I said get out. Well, hello, Miss Logan. How are you, Commissioner? Let me congratulate you on that smart piece of work with regard to Mr. Wong. If it hadn't been for you, we'd be minus the services of our Chinese friend. Oh, thank you, sir. I hope the department has been properly appreciative of the service you rendered them. I imagine the members of this force don't fully recognize the aid and assistance they get from the newspapers of the city. Now, that's really awfully kind of you. <laughs> well, if you ever decide to quit the newspaper game, we can use brains like yours. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> Hello, Commissioner. Street, just what is the department doing in the case of the Chinese princess? Well, everything we can, sir. I'm sure we'll break the case in a couple of hours. I certainly hope so. Lovely evening. Yeah. We certainly could use brains like yours. Beat it. Nice man, the commissioner. Beat it, I said get out of here. Hmm. Jealous, huh? Hello. Wong? Yeah, uh, yeah, I thought you'd phone. Well, Street? I think the case is just about solved. No, really? Well, uh, well, that's fine. I'm going out to Davidson's now. I'd like you to join me there later. Sure, sure. All right, Wong. Yeah, good night. Well, what is it? Something's up. Oh, you're crazy. It's just a routine check. Oh, Bill, you know I need that story. I'll give you the story when I have anything to tell you. Here. Here's a burglary up on Benton Road. Oh, you gave me that this afternoon. Yeah, that's right, I did. Well, that's all for the night. Good night. Mm, you coming? No, I'm going to stick around. I want to hear from a pawn shop detail. Okay. Well, I'll see you in the morning. I'm afraid so. My car out front? No, it's in the alley. Don't shoot. Why not? You're not putting anything over on me, Bill Street. What a pest. Mr. Wong, you'll find Mr. Davidson inside. Come right in, Mr. Wong. Steady. Over there, Wong. That sounds like Jackson's voice. That's right, Mr. Wong. Well, Davidson, I see you have an escort, too. A good evening, Captain J. Hiya. This is not my doing, Mr. Wong. Oh, I gather that. I find the walk from the car a trifle fatiguing. Gentlemen, don't mind. I'll sit down. Well, now, just what is on your mind? We're not satisfied with David's statement about the money. We're either going to get the facts from him or from you. Well, I assure you that I haven't got the money. This is no joke, Wong. 
You happen to have seen those cancelled checks. What do you know about them? Obviously forgeries. As yet, I haven't quite made up my mind as to the identity of the forger. We'll help you make up your mind. On my boat. On your boat? Yes, we're taking a sea voyage. Well, I'm not very partial to the ocean. <laughs> I hope you're a better sailor than I am, Davidson. Just been shot. Bill, Bill, I see somebody in there. Yeah, it's me. Oh, what do you know? Butler. Where's Wong? I haven't seen him. Well, what happened to you? Uh, Mr. Davis and I were set upon by two men. Could you identify him? Well, maybe. I'm a little hazy right now. Where's the phone? In there. Hey, wait a minute. That's Wong's umbrella. Can't you give me some sort of a description of those fellows? Well, no. there was one big husky chap with a mustache, I remember. I only got a glimpse of the other fellow. Well, you stop that. Could you describe their features a little? Well, if I saw the big fellow again, I'm sure. What is that? Something I picked up. Where? Over there. Well, why didn't you tell me? Oh. Palliser Hotel. What is this about the Palliser Hotel? Quiet. Hello. Palliser Hotel? This is Captain Street speaking. Oh, yes, Captain. Room 461. It was occupied by Captain James of the Maid of Orient. He checked out this afternoon. Boat sails at midnight. Yeah? Thanks very much. Well, you're off, huh? Hello, get me Delaney. Delaney, this is Street. I want to detail him in at Pier 56. Maid Orient. Right away. Oh, yeah, and... Yeah. The butler at Davidson's house has been slugged. Take care of it. come to with the rest of that money, we'll let you continue to live. As a matter of curiosity, just what do you intend to do with me? When we get a thousand miles at sea, we'll let you swim home. Splendid. 
Come on. Well, oh, Barney. Keep an eye on him. Aye, aye. You got a gun? This'll do. Take a good look at it. Okay. Coming aboard, Captain. You stay here. Listen, I told you not to follow me any further, and I'm not kidding. Excuse me. Oh, Mr. Sand, take over, please. Yes, sir. Recognize that key? Oh, yes, yeah, my hotel key. I missed it when I checked out. Any idea where you lost it? Why, no. Where did you get it? Davidson's home. Oh, that's where I dropped it. Yeah, you called on it. Yes. Our firm does a lot of business with Mr. Davidson's bank. I went there to get some paper signed. You didn't see a butler slug, did you? Butler slug? I know. Anything of Wong? Wong? No. Why? He called on Davidson and he's disappeared. Disappeared? When were you there? When were you there? About five o'clock. I finished my business, had a whiskey and soda and left. Very funny. Davidson disappeared too. Davidson? Well, he was all right when I left. I'm awfully sorry I can't be of some assistance to you. So am I. Thanks. Well, it's too bad about all this trouble. I hope you come to the bottom of it all right. Looks like you're about ready to shove off. Just waiting for you to get ashore. I see. Nobody goes ashore. I'm an officer. Yeah, get them over there. You've been high-handed, aren't you, Street? You think so? Take these two men up and lock them in his cabin. Handcuff them. I think you better tie them up, Davidson. Here's what. What'd that guy grab you for? Well, I recognized him. You see, he was the one that I saw. Where'd he come from? Down there. Come on, Jerry. I knew Captain Jane was lying. What happened? He and Jackson kidnapped us and brought us down that car. Oh, kidnapping too, huh? Who's this? As you see, he was left here to guard us. Take care of him, Jerry. I've got them both up in the cabin. Good, Good thing you came and you did, Street. All right, boys, come clean. Why'd you Shanghai Davidson? To find out what became of the balance of the princess's money. What'd you bring Wong along for? I'm afraid that was my fault. I told them that 
Mr. Wong had examined all the canceled checks and to ask uh, him about them. I admitted there was one check drawn to my favor, but who signed the rest of them? Who did it, you? No. It's a forgery of the princess's signature. Oh, then somebody's working with you. No. All right, if nobody's working with you, which one of you killed the princess? We never killed the princess. We had a deal to sell her some airplanes. You haven't got anything on us at all. No, just kidnapping. Take them down and book them. And an attempt on my life, eh, Jackson? Yeah, I'm sorry I wasn't successful. Well, we still haven't pinned the murder on anybody. So when you discovered that the aviation company was a fraud, you saw your chance to cover the shortage at your bank with her funds. What do you mean? You forged those checks, Davidson. Oh, don't be absurd. Those signatures were in Chinese. Which you learn when you work for the bank in China. Also the use of a sleeve gun. Are you accusing me of the murder of the princess? Yes. And the maid. And the dwarf. Dwarf? Must I tell you that I exhumed the body of the dwarf from the pet cemetery? One does not bury the body of a vicious dog in a pet cemetery under an expensive headstone. You're a very clever man, Mr. Wong. I congratulate you. All right, Davidson. Captain Street. Hey, Grab Jerry! Jerry, he's got him. Get a line to him. Jerry picked him up. When did you exhume that body? I didn't. But now I think we should. Hey, Street? Oh. oh, boy, what a story. Hello. Hello. Take it easy, Bobby. You're talking to the engine room. <laughs> 